Uh, welcome everybody to the uh, regular stated meeting of the Yarmouth Conservation Commission. This today is uh, Thursday, August 17th, 2023. This is to formally advise that it is required by General Law Chapter 30, 30A, Sections 18 through 25, and pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, signed into law on June 16th, 2021, as extended to by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023. The Yarmouth Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting at the date and time noted above. The public is welcome to attend either in person or via the alternative public access provided on the notice of meeting available on the Town of Yarmouth website. Uh, this is the uh, meet Yarmouth Conservation Commission meeting uh, for August 17th, 2023. Our first order of business is a request for determination of applicability. Uh, Paul Mancuso, BSC Group for Scott Cooper, 30 Channel Point Drive, proposed additions and a pergola in the buffer zone to a coastal bank and land subject to coastal storm flowage. Paul is not here. All right, so we will hold off on that if he shows up a little later on by the time before we finish up. Uh, we will come back to that one. Uh, next order of business is a request to amend an order of conditions for SE 83-2299 Matthew Eddy, Baxter and I Engineering and Surveying for Elisa and James Ballone, 63 Smith Point Road, proposed addition pool, reconfigured deck, hardscape and driveway in the buffer zone to a coastal bank. Uh, oh, good evening everyone. Uh, for the record, Matthew Eddy, professional engineer with Baxter and I Engineering and Surveying. Uh, representing Lisa and James Vallone, uh, the owner and applicant for the project. Uh, also, I believe on Zoom is uh, Rob Calderero, who is a licensed landscape architect with PSD Architects and Builders. And um, with that, I'll get into the presentation. Um, we filed an amended order of conditions request uh, to permit number 083-2299. Uh, we reviewed this general general changes with Brittany a few weeks back prior to the filing to just to determine that she agreed that an amended order uh, made sense for the uh, proper procedure for this filing. Um, I believe the project is fairly straightforward and I'll, I'll walk you through that. Um, the, uh, there are no um, new structures proposed within uh, 50 feet of the top of the coastal bank. Uh, so we meet that condition of no variances required from your bylaw. Um, from the uh, existing condition, as, as this is an amended order, I'm just going to briefly walk through uh, the existing site conditions. Uh, address 63 Smith Point Road, as was read into the record. The lot area is approximately 3.7 acres total with approximately 1.3 acres of upland. Uh, the wetland resources include coastal bank, land subject to coastal storm flowage, coastal dune, and land under the ocean. Um, obviously, all of this upland area is uh, within the, um, as far as jurisdictional buffer to the coastal bank. That's where the majority of the work is, obviously. Um, the uh, existing development, uh, that lot's been long developed since I think it was in the 90s, might have been late 80s. Uh, Existing main house and uh, garage and guest house structure were there along with the uh, hardscape driveway landscape improvements that have existed there for a few decades. Um, the initial filing uh, that was made for the order that we were amending um, included modifications uh, to the guest house, which this is the guest house here. Um, it also included uh, modifications to the existing hardscape and landscaping on the site. Um, what we're proposing now is some just some amendments to that. Um, the existing guest house work as approved under the original order has uh, been just about completed. Um, the landscape and hardscape changes have not been completed and uh, the um, homeowners have want to make some modifications to the proposed hardscape and landscape and also a, a, a few minor uh, changes to the existing uh, main house, which here is the main house footprint. Um, so with that, I'll just walk you through what those proposed changes are under this amended order. Uh, for the main house, there's a slight footprint change here. If you look at the existing conditions, this is actually an octagon shape. 
that's just going to be squared off. It's actually a slight reduction in footprint with that change. And then they are adding a small addition here, which is just a front foyer area for a front porch. Um, and again, that's all within existing hardscape and landscape area. <coughs> um, then the, let's call the main, main part of the addition to the main house is just a small 10 by 20 plunge pool that's being added here and some deck area that's being expanded. The existing deck line falls about like that, so the additional hardscape footprint is roughly in that area there. All those modifications occur outside of the 50 foot buffer. Um, there are additional um, existing landscape and hardscape modifications, um, reconfiguring the walkways in the front. Again, existing house, uh, or existing guest house is remaining as it is. Um, the driveway has actually been modified from the prior approval. Um, members that sat on that may recall there was some dialogue about these existing oak trees here and there was, we we're going to be removing one of them and then replanting another with this modification. We're actually not touching that at all. So all that, those existing oak trees are going to remain. The grading's been pulled back. There's that little stone wall that's out there. That's all going to remain. So I think that was a, a positive benefit uh, of these modifications. Um, And then overall, there is a uh, net reduction of hardscape and building footprint within the zero to 35 foot buffer uh, of about 43 square feet, so a reduction. Then in the 35 to 50 foot buffer, so here's your, that line right here, that's your 35 foot buffer, if I'm falling, there it is right there. That's your 35, and then there's your 50 right along there, and then your 100 is right here. So in the 35 to 50 foot, we have a, about a 351 square foot increase um, in hardscape. We are mitigating that at a two to one ratio, providing 702 square feet of mitigation area. This is all existing lawn area that will be removed and uh, replanted. There was a mitigation uh, landscape plan submitted as part of the package. <coughs> um, and additionally, but we maybe jump to that if you could, you go back. if you don't mind, Brittany, just yeah. <laughs> jumping back real quick. Some additional benefit here, um, and Rob uh, will walk through the uh, um, mitigation landscape plan, but the homeowners are really looking for like a, a natural landscape approach, which is great. I think there's some nice improvements for this and what they're, in addition to the mitigation, this again, this is the only mitigation that's required for the uh, additional hardscape in the 35 to 50, but in addition, um, this area, there's all these areas here you'll see which Rob will, will uh, explain, um, but you have landscaped areas. These are existing landscaped areas, but they're all gonna be uh, landscaped ultimately with actually native um, uh, buffer plantings off of the uh, Cape Cod Cooperative Extension List, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So again, they're gonna be nice uh, uh, native plantings that you would expect to see in, in any buffer areas, and that's you know throughout but then in addition, um, there's actually, and I, I'm not even counting these areas here, which is just additional square footage, but if I just take this area right here, and again, that's where that tree is that I talked about that we're gonna be saving. This area right here is existing lawn area and so forth, that's actually gonna be removed also and replanted with uh, a buffer planting. So this really, I, we could have counted this as additional mitigation area. Um, that was something that was you know, added as we kind of develop the design and so it's, it's just you know further mitigation and this area roughly here um, is it's over a thousand square feet so in total counting that and then you know just counting this area not I'm not counting any of these areas in here um, that's you know it's actually about 1700 square feet of mitigation being proposed um, so I, I believe those are some nice net positives of these adjustments to this plan um, I believe the, uh, the project meets the performance standards uh, necessary for Coastal Bank. Um, and with that, I'd just like to turn it over to Rob, assuming he's on Zoom there, and uh, he can just briefly walk through the mitigation landscape plan for you. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? No. Nope. Can you guys hear? I, we can barely hear you, Rob. <laughs> 
had this problem earlier. Hey, it's here, a little can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. I, can you guys hear me? I can. I, I can, can we make it louder? At some... This is why we typically require people to yeah, show no, up. I, yeah, I mean, I can... It, can you can you just give it a because I mean yeah, yeah, I don't know because it's pretty straightforward, any... Rob. I'm I'm gonna just kind of walk it through and then you can. No, that's fine, Matt. You can chi chime out if there's anything that you feel with them, but again, I think it's fairly straightforward. Um, I won't be able to rattle off the the plant types and so forth that Rob would have been able to identify, um, but you know. Again, he, he's called out specific planting types within this mitigation area here of the, you know, this is the 702 square feet, identifying specific plant species. Um, this, these additional areas, which are all identified as a, with a little uh, plus uh, hatching scheme on his plan, those are all uh, going to be um, uh, planted with uh, plants off of the Cape Cod uh, uh, Cooperative Extension List as they had identified. So in these areas where, where these were areas that weren't necessarily required from the mitigation, we were kind of just showing it in a general fashion. Um, and he'll, he'll utilize plants off of those, off of that list. Brittany had mentioned we had a little bit of dialogue this, uh, this morning and she had mentioned that um, she would likely want to just see the detail for uh, those landscaped areas, which I think that's you know, fine. We're happy to provide that. Um, and then additionally, I think um, Brittany had a question about, we identified this soft path. And the reason I just wanted to put that on the plan because it's already, if you're out there, it's already a uh, mulched area and so forth, but we're gonna be replanting all of that area, just again, I mean, as, a, as additional mitigation. And I just wanted to make sure that we, you know, they left a little bit of a path to get to the utilities that are there because there's a, there's a condenser unit here, there's an existing, um, generator here that was here and then also there's a propane tank that was here that the propane tank was here they relocated it to here when they were doing this work on the guest house just so that it's in closer proximity to the generator and it made sense for having just kind of one access point you know understanding those are utilities and just you know getting to it having one point instead of uh, trying to get around the back of the guest house where the uh, propane tank was as far as filling that when they need to fill it so um, so I, I think that hits the highlights. Um, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Anybody on the board? David. I have a question about the propane tank. Yep. I noticed that when we were there, I think it was on the side. Correct. And it's going to stay there. That's where it's staying, yeah. Okay. Yep. It was previously in the back of the guest house, and that's, yep. Okay. So the soft path will just be bare ground well, or it's, I mean, it's actually, grass. it could be, yeah, mulch. I just wanted to make sure that it didn't get planted so much that when somebody, when a, you know, maintenance personnel needs to get to one of those units that they're stepping over, over shrubs and plants, you know. Can, can you guys hear me now? Yep. I Any can. better? No. R the soft path would be basically plantings that would be under seeded with, with a wildflower seed mix. So, we don't have mulch. We're not going to be mulching in these areas at all. We're just looking for the client to have a really naturalistic landscape throughout this area. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Rob. Okay, anybody? Pat? I'm just uh, saying, when, when we were out there, we noticed that um, the vegetation in the front of the house, the trees had been topped. In the, on the, in the front. The water side mm -hmm. front? Yeah. 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 Okay. And that not can't be. Ha yep. And Brittany did bring that up. We definitely that'll okay. make sure that that doesn't occur. Um, is, is there any? Is there a, any vista pruning in the old file? Because I'm not sure if there was or not. If there's not, I, separately, we'd like to probably come back. I'll have to coordinate with my client, with the homeowner, and you know, come in with a, a vista pruning proposal. But understanding that they, they can't be cutting, topping, or anything out there and make sure that that's conveyed along. Those are all, those are all fresh cuts. Okay. They were pretty fresh, yeah. 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 Um, I have a question about the mitigation zone. You're putting in beach grass? Yes, um, that's correct. On the, on the top there, will that grow? Yes, we actually walked the site and beach grass and bayberry are primary primary component of what's out there. 
Yes, yeah, so he's also proposed uh, Northern Bayberry as well in that uh, mitigation. Northern Bayberry is pretty obvious. I didn't know beach grass would grow up there. I thought it would be more in that dune. Sorry, I don't have area. Well, while Brittany has that picture up, is there something they can do about the um, silt fence that's been? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I mean, the silt fence, that's from the prior work, obviously, that will be removed and new silt fences will be installed as needed for the limited work under this amended order. Absolutely. That's all I have. Anybody else? Nope. Anything else? Nothing else. Anybody in the audience? Anybody on Zoom have a, a question or a comment about this project? If so, uh, raise your hand digitally. I see nobody. <laughs> uh, unless there's any further discussion among the commission. Um, let's see, same same uh, conditions, right, Brittany? You don't, or do you need? Do you want to add one for mitigation? Yeah, I might just have to add one for mitigation because I don't think the original required any. Okay, so do I have a motion? Disturbance and sorry, yeah. Do I have a motion to uh, to approve the amended order uh, of conditions with the one additional mitigation related um, special condition? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Karen, are you here? Uh, you take a pause, please. <laughs> All right. So, so we're going to uh, go back in time uh, to the requested uh, request for determination of applicability. Again, this is for Paul, Man uh, well, Karen Neely for BSC Group for Scott Cooper 30 Channel Point Drive, proposed additions in a pergola in the buffer zone to a coastal bank and land subject to coastal storm flowage. Karen. Good evening, members. I apologize for being a little bit late. I made the decision to come down Route 28, <laughs> and I shouldn't have. So, in uh, August? What were you thinking? What was I thinking? Hey, how long have you lived here? <laughs> um, so what we're look, proposing to do is to add a couple of additions to the front of the house, um, the front being, in this case, towards the street side of the house. Um, we had been in before the commission to get the uh, approval for other stuff in the past, and that uh, has been completed and closed out. Um, we proposed the straw wattle line along the edge of the gravel and along the edge of the gangway. Normally, we would have that closer to the building, but the plants that are there are very healthy, so we put it on along areas that are basically the existing driveway and the existing uh, gangway so it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't kill those plantings while it's sitting on the ground. Um, so you can see the front face right there, that's the first addition, is uh, facing that particular area to the front of the house. And the um, one right there, and you can see where we staked it out for conservation viewing. Um, the board additions are going where those uh, bean poles lie on the, on the ground. And they we're also proposing a proposed pergola, which will come out a little bit further than the, um, the addition towards the street. Um, the closest point of any construction is 62 feet from the top of the uh, coastal bank. And... Um, other than that, it's just a small project with two additions in front of the house. There is nothing else planned for the construction. Okay, thank you, Karen. Uh, questions from the board? No. Oh. Brittany? No questions. Anybody in the audience? Anybody on Zoom? Uh, seeing none, would somebody like to uh, make a motion for a negative Two, negative two. So moved. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members. Thanks, Kieran. Quicker than driving down Route 28. I will be going home on Buck Island Road. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next order of business is a continued notice of intent for SE 83 2393 Roy Okorowski. WRS Engineering for Jeffrey Cutter, 33 Prince Road. After the fact, notice of intent filing for enforcement order for deck expansion, unpermitted patio, and 30 foot by 8 foot float and land subject to coastal storm flowage. Uh, 
Good evening, Roy Okorowski from WRS Engineering. Um, there was two components to the original filing. One was for mitigation and one was for some dock issues. Um, we were supposed to come back earlier and um, Mr. Cutter felt that he wanted to um, hire some counsel to deal with his dock issues. Um, so in that process, I believe a letter was written to the town from um, Rubman and Rudman, um, attorney Glenn Wood, who I believe is on uh, Zoom or on the phone, is also present at the hearing, um, who is helping him address that. I'd like to first just deal with the mitigation planting issues for the violation of the buffer zone hardscaping. Uh, in response to the board's question, you know, requirements, um, we increased the required mitigation to from a required 819 square feet. We are now at 996, fulfilling a three to one in the 30 foot and the, for the patio, 87 square feet for the deck, um, 114, and for the float, 72. That's what was disturbed, and for the required was 261, 342, and 216, requiring 819, and we're going uh, beyond that. Um, we feel that, or we hope that the board is satisfied with that. That was shown in a revised plan. Everybody should have. Um, I called and they said they had it. So um, that part of that, I'd like to answer any questions on that part of the project first if there is any. So I just want to make sure we're talking about the same plan. It's the plan that was revised on June 8th, 2023. Okay. So I'm going over to the rev date. That is correct. So we, you know, we weren't allowed to use the original Rosa Ragosa um, for mitigation because it was already there. Um, so we basically, if you go down, you can see we added that whole area in there and on the other side so there's there's going to be a really nice buffer in the, you know all that grass now any questions from the board well on the plan it's a little confusing because on the picture on the lower left it says Rosa Rigosa to remain and in the general notes, it said all invasives Rosa Ragosa will be removed. Oh. Um, we'd be happy to have a condition in there that says no Rosa Ragosa to be removed, or we can submit a revised plan upon approval. Either one. Oh. I think it'd have to be a revised plan. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're we're getting rid of the Rosa Ragosa. No, no, we were no. we were advised that it was considered not invasive anymore. So, okay. anybody else? That's all. I Brittany, any questions about that? Yeah, I have a couple of concerns. Um, we appreciate the square footage provided, but the spacing is still far too far apart. Um, it doesn't conform with the Cape Cod Cooperative Extension recommendations for spacing, so I think those would have to be met. Um, for reference, both Bayberry and Fragrant Sumac should be at four feet apart on center, and Beach Plum should be five. The, the distances you have wouldn't be sufficient to establish a, the area. Okay. And I would, I would also be concerned about your note about the fertilizer. Since we are on the 35-foot buffer, I don't think we would be allowing any fertilizer for these plantings. Not even 555 organic? Nothing. We don't want anything in there. Because they'll die, most likely, without it. Plantings? Uh, I mean, from my experience on that, um, if you want to put the restriction on, that's fine. Um, but, um, all right. What is the board? I'm not going to argue it if you... Feel that that's, that's just my case. general I thoughts think. here, but what does the board think? Well, I think I think generally speaking, we ask that no fertilizer be put in, uh, with certainly within the 35 foot. Certainly within the 35. Yeah, so okay. I would I would revise we, that note. 
That's fine. But other than the spacing and the the notes that need revision, um, that's all I have about the mitigation portion. Are we voting separately on each thing on mitigation? Well, we're going to handle float in just a minute here, but so we can we'll have a better idea of what we're voting on. Okay. All right. Once we discuss the float, can, are we okay to move on to the float? I just want to be clear because I'm taking notes. So. We're going to need a, a revised plan to show that there'll be no removal of Rosa Bagoza, that the spacing will be corrected, and there'll be no fertilizer within 35 feet. Okay. That's correct. That is correct. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, so, I mean, as far as the float goes, I was not expecting to see the float as part of the this uh, project. If I could address that, um, and the attorneys here also um, just to re refresh the board at the last meeting we um, verbally asked to be able to reduce the float side to the town limit of 200 square feet the chairman said um, he did not agree with that and he wanted the float removed by a date previous to today August 1st after the owner mr. Cutter spoke to council council drafted a letter to the board was that part of the is that in the record yes basically I think there what the letter said is that um, they feel that um, mr. Cutter should be allowed to reduce the size um, of the float to the town's limit there was also a previous denial um, in the record that basically advised mr. Cutter to reduce the float size to 200 it didn't say you we, the, it would be approved it said he could ask so what I'm here today is to again ask if Mr. Cutter can put in a new float that is 30 by six and a half feet, which is underneath the 200 foot limit in the previous footprint, thus complying with the town bylaw for float size. Um, we also spoke to the DEP, which says, you know, that would be allowed under DEP regulations. So it's brought back up. If the board feels or anyone on the board feels that that's not going to be accepted, then I would um, automatically, re it's going to be continued anyway for the other motions, but I would like that included in the um, continued. I don't think that we have a general issue with this reduction of the float size. I think we were just expecting a new filing um, for the float size and reduction. Generally speaking, we, we take uh, things for like floats and uh, floats coastal environmental structures uh, or engineering structures um, you know piers floats ramps decks or docks or, sorry steps coming down uh, coastal banks we typically ask for a separate notice of intent for those but it was already filed under a notice of intent and what we're looking at in my opinion is procedural at this point so and in order to license the increase in size we do need it and to you know encumber the owner with a whole new filing for something that's already filed you're talking you know four or five thousand dollars that something is in front of you and we feel that that is absolutely not needed if you do then fine i'm not going to argue with you it did say in the letter um an rda which but an rda will not allow us unless you see the different to get 91. a license for it so that's why we decided to come back this time and just ask. The only issue is that in the filing you don't include um, the resource areas that would be impacted by a float. The float's already there, it's existing, and we're, so we're not impacting any resource areas. And, and you said last time that you didn't include any filing fee updates for DEP for any in-water activity, I thought. Uh, there, well, I'm basically, the in-water activity is the activity that's done every year but it's already outside of compliance since it wasn't never approved in its configuration so I don't know it's procedural for sure but it's definitely still something the Commission has to decide and and we're not going to argue with what the Commission asks us to do regarding that if you want another filing that's fine we're just trying to save the owner some time and money on the advice of the attorney yeah I understand and, and <laughs> Because I would love to get this off the, off our plate, um, but again, I will point out that it wasn't us 
who violated the Wetland Protection Act. It wasn't us who put in all the all these all the hardscape and everything uh, without permission. So the idea that it's going to cost a little extra, that's not a real big concern at this point for me. Uh, I mean, if the rest of the commission is willing to go and allow this, uh, allow the float change um, as part of this uh, notice of intent filing, I'm willing to live with it if it means getting this off our plate that much faster. I'm, I'm willing to do it at this point. Because, frankly, I have not been appreciative of this process at all. But that's just me. Just a, the original permitting, was it for a 200 square foot float? No. 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 So that was never? Less. It was less. That's why we. It was an in, this is an increase. Confusing. OK. This okay. is an increase of what was permitted, okay. but it's a decrease on what's of there. The violation that was there. Okay. So how much does it increase from 50 about, about 50 46 uh, uh, maybe 16 50 looks some good. feet maybe is that right 50 feet? It's certainly. So yeah, they, it's about 50. originally the original one was like for 150 feet. Yeah. And they want to go to 200. 200. Slightly yeah. less than 200. 195. And there's been a there's been a three the sixty the thirty by eight's been there for thirty years. So in terms of you know any resource impacts, um, we're so it would be thirty by six and a half is what you're saying. Yes. And when you shorten that or narrow it, will it still reach the three foot limit that our it, ne have? it doesn't. Le it never reached the three foot limit. It's gonna. It's gonna be the outside edge is gonna be in the same spot, so it's gonna be at the same, which is close to three feet. Uh, I will say there's not one dock on that entire river that reaches the three foot limit out of eight that I measured. So. I'll live with the uh, reduction in the float down to two hundred. In this ninety-five. In this filing, yeah, because that, I mean, that reaches our uh, bylaws and the size of it. Just to be clear, you you'll live with the, with him not with having to do this under this, under this, not having to redo. Uh, well, how does that go with DEP if that's, if they have to file it? The only thing is, I think they would have to. Don't they have? To, wouldn't you have to just ask amend it before yeah. we? Yeah, before we, uh, before we issue an order of conditions, we would have to at least amend the filing fees, right? I would imagine well, we'd that would, it would be, yeah. Yeah, they would include. I would imagine fees. that would be the only thing we would have to do. So as long as they do that, that would, that would make it right from a that's what I'm from saying a for a DEP for the permanent, yeah. Just for my would, note taking, can you explain that again? <laughs> like I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so they would have to, before we issue a note, an, an order of conditions, mm -hmm. they would just need to essentially it would be this linear fee. file with the amended fees, do an, do an amended fee correction, right? Is that how they do it? At, I've never done one, but yeah, if, if it's an heard, incorrect fee, them, they would yeah. just... But send the difference. An, an, amended, um, an amended fee or an amended fee correction, is that what they call it? And just for the notes too, it should be conditioned in there that he will need an entirely new license. Yeah, it's, the new it's chapter 91 permit would be needed to send to also us. Before he puts in that float. So this float's going to come out this season. Because it's unauthorized right now. And that's that part of it. Yeah, all of the conditions that go along with floats would have to go in right. as well because it's a new, a new addition. Is this coming out of the same as four fifteen? Yes. So it's I not a new filing; it's an amended right. filing. We would not be doing any of those if we have to see what Paul and Pat are agreeing to. 
Right, but I mean, if we agree to this, it's an amended. It would not be amended. Take this is the new. F amendment. This is a. So its all own. the conditions so this would have, have to go be in what? That's the word I'm looking for. Pretty confusing. What are you asking me? I was saying all the float conditions, special conditions for regarding floats, floats would have to would go have to, into yeah. the order, the special order. order. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have any comments or questions about that? No. We're all good with. I'm good with it. Paul, you're good. Brittany. If the depth, what's the depth? Do we know? It's like 2.7, 2.6 and 2.7. Is that an, a gross estimate? Just, yeah. yeah. From the depth for 30 yeah. years. So, I, know. I mean, and that's the only reason I'm even entertaining this yeah. is because it's gone for that long that, that nobody said anything. So. so the ramp would be extended for that foot and a half. Yeah, just push the extra. Yeah, that's the only only reason why I'm entertaining it either, yeah. because it's been there for so long. Okay. All right. Anything else, Brittany? Anybody in the audience? Anybody on Zoom? So, yeah. Um, are you going to vote, or do you need to continue for the revised planting plan? I think they can approve pending completion of a revised plan if you're confident that you can. Yeah, meet that can, spacing. I well, think it's pretty clear. The, the spacing and the I think that's fine. You're good with that. I'm good with that. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, anybody? Nobody on Zoom. All right. Unless any, there's any further discussion among the board. Do I have a motion to to approve the project with special conditions um, for both the. Uh, Plant, planting and mitigation planting areas as well as the floats um, float we need a we will need so to revise and, and pending a revised, uh, plan. A revised plan that shows uh, let's see if there's no uh, the removal or I uh, sorry removing the note that says or putting a note in that says no regos of removal um, I can't even read my writing. Uh, no fertilizer within 35 feet. Right. And what was the third one? Plant spacing. Hold on, I got it. Plant spacing. Plant spacing. Oh, plant spacing, yes. Right. Uh, to meet the um, Cape Cod Cooperative Extension uh, planting recommendations. Right. Did I forget anything? No, oh, I think no. that's it. That's all I have then. Do I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Oh. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very unanimously. Thank you for your time. You can only keep this one in cardstock. I could use four. All right, next order of business is a notice of intent, Bob Perry, Cape Cod Engineering for Henry and Nadine Gill, 206 South Street, proposed raise and replace of a single family dwelling with new deck, patio, and pool and land subject to coastal storm flowage and the buffer zones to a coastal bank and dune. And we have a recommendation or a letter from uh, Bob Perry asking that the applicant is informed as he would like to attend the public hearing. Unfortunately, he's not available. For this date, uh, we're therefore requesting a public hearing scheduled for 8-17 to be continued to September 7, 2023. Uh, do I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And Phil, it looks like you didn't get the word, did you? Oh, sorry about that, Phil. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. I'll take this as a victory. <laughs> At, le at least you didn't wait uh, too long, right? What was the date we moved it to? Sorry, Pat. Uh, September 7th. Bummer. And Pat, you second it? Yes. Okay. Did we vote? I can't remember. I guess we did. I don't think we did. All in favor? Yeah, I don't think we voted. I asked, yeah. I yeah. Oh, we did? Okay. It was unanimous. It was. Oh, uh, right, Pat? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. There. Hey, right, hold on. I haven't even read it in yet, but all right. <laughs> You're all go. good, everybody? Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, next order of business is another notice of intent for Dan Ogela, uh, Dan Ogela Down Cape Engineering Incorporated for Ali 
Big Dilly, Big Dilly Art, Lazari. Sorry if I screwed that up. Uh, 55 Bayberry Road, proposed additions, driveway and septic upgrade and land subject to coastal storm flowage. All right, good evening. I'm Craig Ferrari with Down Cape Engineering. Craig, Craig, could you spell your last name for me? Ferrari like the car, F-E-R-R-A-R-I. Yeah, I just didn't hear you, that's all. Thank you. All right. Um, so this is a project, a, a major home renovation here. Uh, this is a flood zone only, so that's our only resource area we're contending with. Um, and with that in mind, we're looking to make the existing non-compliant house compliant with the new flood zone regulations, uh, as well as expand the footprint a little bit, a couple of little additions in a garage area. Um, and then we're also upgrading the Title V septic system to a, a, a new compliant um, system with, with a pump chamber and, and the full five foot separation from groundwater. So that's gonna be a big net improvement on the project. Um, you know, a new, a new driveway leading to the garage here and some grading. Uh, the only, you know, the main fill on this project is going to be just to fill in the basement of the existing house and what's needed for the septic system. Uh, we're not really proposing to raise the grades uh, outside of that. So there's, there's not really, you know, a net fill other than the area needed for the septic system and the groundwater separation. Um, we're actually gonna wind up lowering the grade in the rear to meet some of that flood compliance and make sure that crawl space drains, drains out in the event of a flood. Um, I, think, I think that's most of the project, so happy to answer any questions you folks have. All right, any questions from the board? No, sounds good. Brittany? No questions. We always prefer tree preservation when possible in the floodplain, but we can't require it yet. Anybody in the audience? Anybody on Zoom? Oh, wait, I do have a comment. We're waiting for the DEP number. Well, that would be a problem. Um, I, think um, we, I think we got that in. Okay. Let's see. So SE number 083-2401. 2401? Yep. It's news to me. All right. That even Actually, makes it it's easy. on my voting sheet already. Just got it without... Yeah, okay. I think we just got it. Sounds good. Okay. Were there any comments on there? No comments? No? no? Okay. okay. All right. Uh, and unless there's any further uh, discussion from the board, uh, do I have a motion to approve the project with special conditions? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. Mm. One of the quicker uh, notices of intent <laughs> I've ever done. Thank Thanks, Craig. <laughs> All right, next order of business is a continued stormwater management permit application for SW 2023-002 JMO Ryland Associates for Christian Davenport, the Davenport Companies Incorporated Lot 2A, Route 6A, proposed development of a 14-lot cluster sub subdivision in Yarmouthport. Uh, we have an issue in that our the uh, peer review uh, engineer is currently on vacation, correct? She was was okay yeah. and so she didn't get a chance to um, do any more review uh, so I'm just going to table this until September 7th you don't have to vote Right. Uh, next order of business is some enforcement. Uh, this is for one Malfa Road removal of vegetation on the buffer zone to a coastal beach coastal dune and land subject to coastal storm flowage and I just remembered I didn't stop at this on the way sure on July 12th DNR and I um, were called out to one Malfa Road from a call from a neighbor that there was vegetation removal happening on the town property in the way to water on Malfa Road. Um, it is adjacent to coastal, there's a tiny salt marsh here in coastal dune, coastal beach. And so the, the Rugosa Rose and other shrubs were removed from this um, small area, about 15 by 10. Um, 
consisting mostly of rugosa rose. Um, there was some other shrubs in there too, but could not identify them afterward. Um, I let I informed the homeowner that we would put him on a hearing later in August to give the rugosa rose a chance to grow back to see what the area looked like because it's so such a tenacious plant. We weren't sure if we would be requiring restoration plantings be completed or not. And so this is what it looks like now. They're about five inches tall. Um, so it would be up to the commission to decide whether or not some plantings would be required or to just let the area re-naturalize and to, to um, have a, be a no disturb zone in the future. Um, I did sp speak with the homeowner as well and he to allow the area between the property boundary, this rock and the garage be cleared in the future for access around um, his property. Do we ha is the property line uh, marked? Yeah, it's by this a stake up there someplace. Yeah, this bound stake and this concrete marker are the property line. The rest is in the road right of way. Is your opinion that it will grow back? I think it will grow back. Oh yeah, that stuff will. It grow might back. have to be. Maybe we can decide to assess it in the next summer. I was going to say I, I would wait another year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but both the homeowner and the neighbors wanted to get a clarification on what may or may not be touched. Um, so this area between the rock boundary and the garage may be managed in the future for access. Um, and I think that is all I have. How many growing seasons? One or two? For what do you monitoring. Mean? For monitoring, Defin definitely would be two, um, but. Yeah, I think we should just, I think that we should at least wait one more year. Because I mean, right? I mean, I, I don't I don't think we should try and do any kind of planting at this point because I think it would just come back and get smothered out by Ragosa Rose and I'm kind of worried that in another year we're gonna also see all sorts of bittersweet coming sorts through bittersweet, there. Bittersweet, yeah. Um, uh, there was some showing. But I would say we should probably hold off or reserve any any further action until we assess it again about mm -hmm. this time. In a year. And I also think that the homeowner is working on some um, updates to the house. And so we might be seeing a filing from them prior to that, maybe. I'm not sure when, um, but we can check on it then as well. Okay. Would it make any, any uh, sense to at least demarcate the property line at this point a little bit better so that it's clear clear as to where the line is no, that might be that a good idea so like that, yeah. four by four posts or something like that do you think you have a better idea of where the property line is or do you think no um, they down tape staked the property last week oh, okay so it's currently it's all yeah so we have some additional stakes out there um, so, I mean, if you'd like some more permanent markings, but yeah, as Brittany kind of indicated, he does have some plans on, on uh, you know, updating some of these structures. So it's more than likely that we'll be back before you um, at some point in the next year with, with some other site improvements as well, um, just to permit those. So you know that you're not supposed to be doing any more cutting, right? On, and you know where the town line starts and where your property line ends, right? Um, yes. Um, who? The problem was, and I'll take full responsibility, the last three years I've been in the hospital and the growth has been unbelievable. Like, and the town or anyone, all the neighbors haven't been cutting it back. And so this is the first time I've been on my feet. I spent eight days in intensive care and then five days and three days. I'm finally, thank God, feeling a little better. And um, I couldn't get in my driveway because the the growth extended across my driveway, like halfway. So I had them cut it down. Unfortunately, they went further and they, the landscapers went back to the, the same as next door across the street. Right. And normally for the last 35 years where the rock is, I just been cutting it back myself. So if you don't mind when it grows back, can I just trim it I mean, who, or is the town going to, how's that work? You can no. trim it up to your yeah, property and, line. Yeah, and unfortunately, the aerial imagery does not support what you're saying. Um, the growth here has always gone out basically up to your driveway. If it becomes an issue for access, we can talk about that. 
Um, but anything on the town property should be allowed to grow, I, grow I, back. Yeah, I, I, just to clarify, I think, I think what he's saying is, you know, he's historically managed some areas on his property. I think one of the issues was he hired a landscaper that, that obviously went a little above and beyond what was historically cut. So I think he definitely understands and, and you know, we'll, we'll make sure to demarcate this in the future. Um, in a way that the landscapers aren't gonna yeah. gonna be cutting this area, and we'll let the town town areas grow back for sure. Yeah, definitely. Who was the landscaper who did the work? Um, it's a strange. Th um, I have their name. I was using one for three or four years, and I happened to be riding down the street. I come out of my driveway, and I couldn't get out of my driveway. I just flagged down. Right. So who did this? Who did this cutting? Um, I can give his names. I I am. Um, Brittany had met him on site that day, I believe. I forget their names, but I have their yeah, I oh, wait. I didn't take a picture of the car, the truck, unless I didn't. I have their phone number. Uh, I don't know if you want their phone number, but. Don't put it out, right? <laughs> But <laughs> if you could just uh, if you could just either send an email, yeah. email yeah, email it to her. His yeah. their name. If you have the name and name and phone Unfortunately, number. Unfortunately, they don't speak English. The work is the seller I deal with the owners. They're all nice people, but uh, I don't know. I'm not like I said. But I'm just going to cut back to the rock. Correct. That's yes. it. And I'm On not your property. Touch anything else. It's fine. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, from from your garage to the rock, not yeah. From yeah, your not, driveway to the rock. Not, yeah, not from, not from no, the no, street from side. From my garageway rock. this way. Yep. Not the other way. No, I I want the believe me, I want it there. We need it. Well, I just wanted clarification because you said up to the rock yeah, and the no, rock. I've been, been from my yeah. like the driveway going, you know, to the thing. But I mean, I love the vegetation. I mean, I want it there. I'm not looking to you know to get eliminate any vegetation there. The more the better. I hope it. I'm, I'm hoping it normally, I don't like the, the bottom where it's like sticky and it's beer. I like it when it's, when I cut it down, it grows to me all the time fuller. But I won't, you know, that's just me. Um. <clears throat> okay, yeah, so I think, I think we're all good. Uh, you, can, you can certainly cut that back from your, from your uh, garage to the rock, that's, that's fine. Uh, Obviously, don't go onto the town property not, again. Not touching, not uh, going near it. Please make sure you you send uh, Brittany the uh, contact information and the name of the of the landscaper. Sure. Uh, if you could do that uh, by Monday at the latest. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, and then we'll go from there and just to reassess in in uh, in a year. Next year. And like you said, I hopefully we'll have a plan by then. Um, and if you come in between between now and then, that's that's fine. We can we can assess that as it comes in then. Okay. So in a year, do you want photos, or should we have them um, send a monitoring report, or just what are we looking for for monitoring? I think just at a this photo. Point we just need a, a photo, right? Yeah, to I think just a photo exactly would be fine. You'll have this one, and then have another one just like this from more or less the same vantage point. Who's going to send the photo? The owner? Homeowner or the representative. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to be clear. Not, not us. <laughs> did, did you write an official, an official enforcement order for this or? I didn't know. Um, we have some email correspondence. Okay. I'm, I'm good with that as long as you would just do one quick uh, email to summarize it all and send that it out to everybody. This is. I just sent him an email saying, "Please attend," uh, and I can just summarize what we talked about today. Sounds good. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody? Know, anybody else? Any questions or anything? You're good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We didn't need to vote on any of that, did we? No, because we didn't, we didn't write an enforcement order, so. Um, we're just going to ask for photos. 
All right. Uh, other business. Uh, Conservation Commission representative reappointment for the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, Paul, have you had second thoughts? Nope. All set? All set. You still want to do it? Anybody want to oppose them? Last chance. Uh, do you need a vote for it or just okay? Yes, so, please. do I have a, a motion to um, reappoint uh, Commissioner Paul Huggins to the Community Preservation Committee as a representative for conservation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. Uh, also, do we have any uh, meeting minutes? Have we looked at yes, those? Yes, I looked at them. They're fine. I appreciate the um, addition that uh, Brittany does, and I miss things. So they're excellent, as usual, because of Brittany, Boys. not because of anything I did. <laughs> but I would approve them, yes. I'd so move to approve them. Okay, so it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carries unanimously. And then do we have any other business not reasonably anticipated? No business. Nobody applied yet? Still looking for oh. people? I haven't heard back. We had a man come in interested in forming a pond coalition who we gave the application to who may apply. So hopefully he does. But no further movement on... No further movement. I have crickets. Have we asked why? I'll ask again. I mean. You're good. We posted it on the website, or we will. We sent the post today to be posted. Would it be appropriate if one of us called um, the select person in charge of <coughs> and ask what's going on? Or does that put you in a bad place? I don't I know mean, the I, answer I, to that. I will ask. Uh, I'll I'll ask through, well, both Brittany and uh, Karen. To say something. Okay. Thank you. So. All right. Uh, unless there's any further business before the board, would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Carries unanimously. We stand adjourned at 5.55 p.m.